Korean Peninsula and the White House are today's first two stops on CNN 10. I'm Carl Azus. Thanks for taking 10 for today's show. There have been a lot of ups and downs in the relationship between North and South Korea since fighting stopped in the Korean War in 1953. This could be another low point. This week, North Korea blew up an office on its side of the border that the North and South had used for diplomatic talks. No one was in the office at the time. It's been closed for months because of the coronavirus pandemic. North Korea said it did this as revenge. A group of people who'd defected, who'd fled from communist North Korea to live in democratic South Korea, have been sending balloons across the border. They carried messages that spoke out against North Korea. That country says the leaflets violated a peace deal it's had with South Korea since 2018 when the two countries agreed to stop sending propaganda materials across their border. But some analysts say North Korea might be using this issue to make up a crisis. North Korea has acted like this before to bring international attention or urgencies to issues it's involved in. South Korea says the destruction of the office is a betrayal to those who want peace on the Korean peninsula and it says it'll respond strongly if North Korea continues to make relations worse. On the other side of the Pacific, U.S. President Donald Trump was set to sign an executive order on Tuesday. It's related to the civil unrest involving police and civilians we told you about early this week. The order would encourage police departments to make the best decisions when it comes to using force against suspects. It would keep closer track on officers accused of using excessive force, and it would encourage police to bring along social workers when responding to calls related to mental health, drug addiction, and homelessness. The White House says the order is intended to build trust between police departments and the communities they serve, but some observers say it's not clear how the executive order would be enforced. Meantime, Republicans and Democrats in Congress are working on separate bills concerning law enforcement. 10 second trivia. Which of these nations borders both the Arabian Sea and the Bay of Bengal? India, Bangladesh, Yemen, or Malaysia? India is the only one of these countries situated between both bodies of water. news in the fight against coronavirus. Researchers in the United Kingdom say a decades-old inexpensive drug might help save lives. For the sickest patients on ventilators, a steroid named dexamethasone was recently found to reduce the risk of death by one-third. But experts say the findings are still early and need more research. With the summer vacation season heating up during this pandemic, people are trying to figure out whether it's safer to drive or fly. Experts say both carry risks, but flying presents unusual challenges. As Europe reopens many of its borders and airlines hope to get some business back, at Lufthansa's check-in in Frankfurt, it's clear much has changed. Of course, keeping physical distance is almost impossible when you're on an international air journey. That's why Lufthansa and many other airlines have a policy of asking all of their passengers to wear masks both in the airport and on the plane. Inside the terminal, a lot of physical distancing measures, but upon boarding, no more. Purser Mike Lauterkorn hands out disinfectant wipes, but otherwise, he says, passengers don't need to change their behavior much. The only thing we ask the passengers that they wear the mask the whole time. Uh, only if they drink or eat something, they can take it off. Like many European carriers, most of Lufthansa's fleet remains idle ever since the coronavirus outbreak. The company recently secured a bailout of about $10 billion to help it survive the crisis. But our flight from Frankfurt to Porto is packed. So as you can see, we're all sitting pretty close together. And that's one of the dilemmas that airlines like Lufthansa, but many others as well, face. On the one hand, they need a hygiene concept 
that works, but it also has to convince wary travelers that it's safe to get back on planes again. Some travelers a bit concerned. It's also a little bit scary, I think, because you never know what you might catch or not. I'm a little bit surprised because I thought, actually based on the coronavirus, we are sitting very, very close. Lufthansa says state-of-the-art air filters on the planes make infections unlikely. The medics say that more than 99% of those um, uh, viruses are going to be taken out by those filters. The pilots, by the way, always have to wear masks on the ground, but never in the air, the captain says. It's the face, it's the expressions are very important if you communicate with your, with your colleague, you know, and you have some strange situation, it's good to see. Uh, is he in fear? Before landing in Portugal, the crew hands out leaflets on how to prevent infections. As airlines try to convince travelers that holiday air travel is possible without risking new spikes in coronavirus infections. Good news and bad news for the U.S. economy. First, the good. U.S. retail sales are on the rise. Shoppers are heading back to stores that have been closed for months because of COVID-19. From April to May, retail sales increased by more than 17%. That's the biggest month-to-month -month jump since record-keeping on this began in 1992. But sales are still more than 6% lower than they were at this time last year. Now the bad news. Hundreds of stores are closing. The shutdowns of the pandemic deepened problems for companies that were already in trouble. Pier 1 Imports is closing all of its stores. Tuesday morning and JCPenney have filed for bankruptcy, but this doesn't necessarily mean they're going out of business. You can break down bankruptcies into two camps, reorganization and liquidation. Let's first talk about reorganization. This is what a company does when it wants to stay in business. So a company will file what's called a Chapter 11 bankruptcy, and it means three things. First, a court becomes the overseer of the company. The original owners will be in charge of the day-to-day -day operations, but any big decisions have to be approved by a court. Second, a company can get out of certain contracts. Think leases for stores or labor contracts between its employees. This can be great for businesses, but not great for the people on the other ends of those contracts, like landlords or employees. Now third, the company will work to get a payment plan approved by the courts and by its creditors. Part of that payment plan will probably include some debt to equity swap. So creditors will get shares in the company to forgive the debt. But then sometimes it doesn't work. That's when liquidation happens. Now this can happen in two ways. A company can file a different kind of bankruptcy called Chapter 7, or the more likely scenario is that a company will file for Chapter 11 a second time. Its nickname is Chapter 22, 11 plus 11. When this happens, a company's assets are tallied up and sold off one by one. That's when you get going out of business sales. There actually is still a slight chance though that a brand can survive because when a company's assets are sold, someone could buy up a brand's trademark and start it up again. When that happens, it's basically a new company. So when you hear a company you like declared bankruptcy, know that it's not a death sentence. There are plenty of companies that have filed for chapter 11 bankruptcy, reorganized their debts, and it worked. They kept on going. General Motors, Chrysler, pretty much every airline, they all filed for bankruptcy, reorganized their debts, and went back to work. Some high school graduates in New Hampshire are on top of the world, or at least on top of Mount Cranmore. The ski area let Kennett High School use its chairlifts as a makeshift graduation procession. It was a creative solution to social distancing. An assistant superintendent said educators wanted to do something special for their graduates, and the seniors got a pretty impressive photo op to go along with their diplomas. There's no question it gave them a lift. It was a terrible idea with all the pomp that circumstances would allow and made for an event that was a sight to ski. I'm Carl Azus for CNN 10.